When you marry your spouse, you have to recite vows such as in sickness and health, for better or worse, and most importantly, till death do you part. I, male 45, took those vows seriously when I married my first wife, 45, 15 years ago. The two of us married after dating for about four years and living together for two. It seemed like we were a great fit for one another. Similar goals, interests, values, and everything like that. It was around three years in when I started noticing little things. She wasn't distant or anything and still accepted my touch, but she was sneaky. My ex never wanted me to see her phone, not that I had a reason to at the time, but making it so obvious drew attention to it. This probably ended up being her downfall. The thing that made me realize something was going on was when her phone rang while we were watching a movie one night. She bolted to the bathroom and started talking in hushed voices. I confronted her when she came back because that was just too strange for me not to bring up. Again, more denial that nothing was going on. It was her friend who really needed to talk to her. I remember hearing a male voice before she rushed off to the bathroom, so I confronted her about that fact. It's a guy friend who was her excuse. As far as I knew, my wife didn't have any male friends. I wouldn't have a problem with it, but the fact that she didn't say anything was concerning. So I did the only thing I could think of. I grabbed her phone from her when she was texting on it constantly one day. She shouted at me, but I got the evidence I needed. I saw text back and forth with this guy named John. They were of a romantic and sexual nature which just confirmed for me that my wife had been cheating on me. I asked how long this had been going on, she said a few months. It wasn't something she was looking for, but it just happened. The thought never crossed my mind that she would ever step outside our marriage. It sounded silly, but I never saw it coming. We seemed happy, and she seemed genuinely happy to me. Yet, here she was telling me she had cheated on me with some guy she met at a coffee shop of all places. He was the barista and started flirting with her. One thing led to another and a month later they started an affair. Cheating was a deal breaker for me, so I told my wife our marriage was over. She cried and seemed genuinely distraught by the thought that our marriage was going to be over. This lasted for a few days until I told her I had finally gone to the lawyer to start the divorce process. After I told my wife she told me that she never loved me anyway and her new boyfriend would make her happier than I ever would. The sudden change in her attitude was shocking. I knew she was just doing this to hurt me, so I tried to brush it off. In a little under a week, my wife moved out and stayed with her family. I almost wanted to ask why she had moved in with her new boyfriend, but I wanted to make a clean break from her. After the papers were signed, I felt relieved. However, there was also devastation. I hated the fact that my first marriage had ended the way it did. We were supposed to spend the rest of our lives together. At the time, I was close to turning 35 and facing the end of my marriage. My ex seemed so happy once the divorce was final. She'd be posting these pictures on Facebook of her new boyfriend. I had to eventually delete my Facebook because it wasn't a good idea for me to constantly be obsessing over what she was doing. I then started working on myself, working out, hobbies, friends, and everything I could do to keep my mind off my ex. The divorce was a necessity, but it didn't mean that I wasn't hurt that this ended up being the outcome. It was entirely my ex-wife's fault. All she had to do was stick to her vows. How hard was that? After about a year, I was starting to reach a new level of happiness. I wasn't sure what my ex-wife was up to and didn't care. My sister cared because she took it upon herself to tell me what happened to my wife. They had mutual friends, so it was easy to find out what was going on with my ex. The AP ended up taking her for all she was worth. She paid his bills, gave him money for a business, and the kicker was he had been cheating on her the entire time. I didn't feel any pity for my ex, because now she knew how it felt. How she thought a cheater was going to be faithful to her was beyond me. She was in a lot of debt, now thanks to giving the AP so much money. During our marriage, we both had good jobs and made decent money. We had long since paid off any debt we had so, it was a shock to learn that she had ended up in such a bad financial spot. This woman my sister was describing to me didn't sound like my ex at all. It sounded like an entirely different woman. She was so desperate that she had even gone around asking others for money, including my sister. I was surprised she didn't reach out to me, 
but I had her blocked on all my devices. We didn't share any children, so there was no reason for us to remain in contact with one another. Once I met my second wife, all thoughts of my ex flew out of my mind. We met at work, actually, and while it's never a good idea to get involved with a coworker, I couldn't help myself. The same applied to her. It was about a year and a half after we met and started dating that I proposed. It was quite fast, but I felt like it was right. When my wedding was announced, my ex did reach out to me to tell me congratulations. I just responded with a smiley emoji, because how else can you respond to that? I didn't have any obligation to speak with her, but I still wanted to say something to her, just to get it off my mind and never have to think about it again for as long as I lived. Now I'm 45, and I've been married to my second wife for years. Things couldn't be better between the both of us. The last I heard my first wife was still alone and hopping from relationship to relationship. The way things are looking for my ex is not good. She is going to end up being alone when she could have had a long-lasting relationship. I guess I should thank her because if she hadn't cheated on me, I never would have met my second wife who is amazing. OP, it's good to hear that you were able to find happiness with your second wife after the heartache you experienced with your first wife. The last thing you said is especially poignant, because she probably did you a favor when you think about it. Still, I hate that you had to hurt to find your way to true happiness. She is now reaping what she sowed by cheating on you all those years ago. People always go about a sudden problem in their marriage the wrong way. Instead of talking to the partner, they seek someone outside the relationship, which makes no sense. It was no surprise to hear that the man she cheated on you with ended up cheating on her. Once a cheater, always a cheater, as the popular saying goes. If she ends up spending the rest of her life alone, then that is on her. You were big enough to respond to her congratulations message, even if it wasn't necessary at all. This story is another example of always pushing forward and never giving up on love. You took a chance even though you were terrified because you felt like it would be good for you. It truly is a good mindset to have after such a traumatic event as a divorce. Now let's get into our second story. My wife and I met on a blind date that was set up by friends. I was a little hesitant to go through with this blind date because I never had much luck with them, but I had been in a bit of a dry spell. It was either go on this date or continue to remain lonely. I got on the date and it ended up being amazing. My wife or girlfriend at the time was very friendly and charming. We had a decent amount in common where making conversation wasn't a struggle. The two of us dated for nearly two years. From there, we moved in together and got married in a small wedding ceremony surrounded by family and friends. We had lived together before marriage, which I always insisted on doing. In my mind, it gave people a chance to get to know each other better and see if they were a match before taking that giant step into marriage. Marrying my wife seemed like the best decision at the time. The two of us moved into a better apartment, continued to succeed in our jobs, and even got a pet dog. She was the one who wanted the dog, yet I ended up being the one who took care of it most of the time. Don't get me wrong, I loved the dog and enjoyed taking care of her. I'd always loved animals, but my wife was the one who wanted this specific breed that could be a bit difficult to handle. She promised me up and down that she would care for the dog a little more than half the time. However, I was doing over 90% of the work when it came to our pet. This should have been my first red flag that she was so willing to brush off a responsibility. I just did my best to handle it because I was still madly in love with my wife. When she got a promotion at work, things started to change, but not for the better. I understood she had a lot of responsibilities now because she was supervising three people. It just seemed like there was something more to it. Any time I asked her what was going on, she just said she was super stressed at work and that she was sorry for treating me this way. It was just a whole lot of stress. I wanted to believe it, so I forced myself to believe it. Ignorance is bliss, as they say, and I remained in ignorance for nearly a year after my wife's change in behavior. One day, I decided to surprise her at work. I had gotten off early, so I thought it would be a nice, romantic little thing for us to do. I got to the office and was told that my wife had stepped out to go to lunch. It was my fault for not checking with her, so I went back to my car. When I was about to pull out of the parking spot, I saw my wife entering the office building with a younger man who I think was one of her subordinates. 
The reason I did a double take is how she was acting with him. She was very touchy, giggly, and not acting like a supervisor would with someone they were supervising. I watched them go inside the building, but as much as I tried to brush it off I couldn't because I kept picturing how happy she looked. My wife never looked at me like that anymore. It pained me to say this, but it was the truth. I wanted to ask her what was going on, except I doubted she would tell me the truth. So, I decided to check her phone when she was in the shower. The phone is always the place where you'll find what you need. Her texts were full of evidence of an affair with her subordinate. I sent copies of all the texts to myself in a surge of impulsivity. I wanted a chance to be able to use them. Once she got out of the shower, I told her I knew of the affair and to not BS me about everything because I knew the truth. She seemed shocked that I would take the step of going into her phone and violating her trust, which was ridiculous. She was the one to cheat on me in the first place. She looked like she wanted to hit me, but just stormed off back into the bathroom. I was glad that we only had another month left on this lease because our marriage was over. For a few days after that, I was in shock about the end of my marriage, and once the shock wore off the grief set in. My wife had left to go stay with her parents. They were supporting her, but this was no surprise. To them, she was their little girl who could do no wrong. I had finally sought out a lawyer and planned to move into another unit in the complex that was smaller than the one I shared with my wife. She seemed to be facing no consequences. Her family and friends were on her side with her job still going well. It was then I had enough and decided to make the affair known to my wife's workplace. I had evidence to back it up, so it wasn't like I couldn't prove it. The fallout was quick. My wife was forced to resign, and the subordinate was moved to another department. When I learned she left her job, she reached out to me and lashed out, saying how she knew this was my fault. I didn't deny it and told her I took screenshots of her text messages that day and was sitting on them for weeks now. She screamed and cried, saying she was going to have her father hire a lawyer to go after me, but it was all bluster. My soon-to-be ex was the one who had done wrong by having a relationship with someone below her. It went against the rules set forth by her place of work. It was a relief when the divorce was final and we were no longer legally married. I spent a lot of this situation in a state of shock and then devastation. Most of the time I was wavering between the two. The divorce being final was a chance for me to be able to heal, which I desperately needed. For a while, my ex-wife did try to harass me, but eventually, it stopped. I don't know why she did that and frankly, I didn't care. It meant that my ex was now finally out of my hair. It was the best part of it. The last I heard about my ex is that she had gotten another job, but it's much lower paying than her other one. It had been hard for her to find one because of how suddenly she left her other job. This was completely of her own doing so, she had no one to blame but herself. I still don't know where it all went wrong or why she cheated in the first place. The best I can figure is she's just a terrible person who enjoyed the rush of cheating on me with someone at work. His being younger probably was a boost to her ego too. My ex certainly would have gone far in that job too. I've since received another promotion with another on the horizon. I also got the dog in the divorce because I was the one to take care of her anyway. There was no way she was going to take her. Honestly, I can say I don't care what happens to my ex or where she ends up in five years. I'm on the path to happiness and she seems to be on a path to permanent misery. Do I hope that she looks back and regrets what she did? Sort of, but I hope one day I won't care about that either. OP, it was such a boss move to take screenshots of her text messages and then send them to the higher-ups at your wife's job. She should have thought about the consequences before she started sleeping with a subordinate. Anyone will tell you that's a bad idea, and if it does get found out, it can result in the loss of a job. Just keep that woman on the back burner of your mind. She isn't worth any more of your thoughts, tears, or energy. It's a shame her family backed their daughter and refused to force her to take responsibility for her actions, but this just proves the whole family is trash. Continue to focus on your job, dog, and whatever else makes you happy. This will help you truly be able to move on from her once and for all. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, comment below with your thoughts on what happened. 
If there is a story you would like to share with me about your own situation or someone else's, then please do not hesitate to contact me. Take care.